we have with us today, um, you I know you've met Chris Cox before, if you've attended any of the um, Tableau Lives. He's our founder, our principal, and our GGTK, our good guy to know. You also have John Rosales with us, who's our director of education and a certified Tableau instructor and consultant, um, who has got the best DJ voice around and is an amazing uh, trainer uh, that you'll enjoy. And I'm Heather Dottillo. Um, I'm the VP of operations here at Boulder Insight, also certified as a trainer and consultant, um, just like Chris and uh, uh, just as Chris is as a consultant, and John and I are both trainer consultants. Um, so we're thrilled to have you here. Um, our agenda today is we'll walk through with a little bit of a welcome. We'll then jump right into the submitted questions and topics. So you may have noticed um, for those of you that registered um, this time for the, the session that you actually have an opportunity to put your question right in the registration piece um, of, of part of the process. We'll also give you a link to a question form for um, in between sessions and before you may register. Um, we'll also cover some tips, tricks, and shortcuts that um, you know we've been doing uh, and most recently in the last month or so that have percolated to the top for us, or we're triggered by some of the questions we've got and we're thinking like, hey, if these guys have questions around dates, why don't we talk to you a little bit more about how to understand dates? Like they're a little confusing in Tableau. So we'll make those uh, based on the types of questions we've gotten. And then there may be more uh, questions that come um, so you may have not submitted a question, but as you're leaning into the, the session today and listening to the questions, you might that might percolate a question for you, or you might not have had one at the time of registration, and you have one now as well. And then we'll make a few announcements. So that's our plan for you for today to take good care of you here. So let me just tell you a little bit about Boulder Insight. Um, we have been around, we've been a Tableau partner for over 15 years. And some of the things that sets us apart is that we've been doing this a long time. And so there's very few questions we haven't seen that we don't have ideas of how we answer. And if we haven't seen them, we are these tenacious problem solvers that thrive on questions and um, are tenacious about giving the answers to you, uh, um, trying to help you find those answers, trying to help you learn and grow with us. Um, and we really focus on uh, human-centered design principles, working as a team um, and really helping our community learn and grow. So Tableau Live came about actually during the pandemic. Um, we started doing these sessions monthly just as a way to reach out to our clients, but also the Tableau community at large to say, hey, we're here to help. If you have questions, um, we've got answers. And if we don't have answers, we're going to do our best to try to help guide you to find those answers. And so this is just a way for us to stay connected with our, our clients, stay connected with our community and answer the questions that you have for you in real time. Um, and then we would love to know a little bit about those of you that are on the call today. So what we're going to ask you to do is find your chat if you can. You don't have to come off mute. You don't have to turn on your camera. But we're just going to ask in the chat if this is your first Tableau Live, give me a yes or a no if this is your first Tableau Live. Chris is raising yes. And so we know that's actually a no um, because he is our our. our GGTK and he's here to guide you through the process. But if any of you have been here, it's your first time, give us a yes or no, if it's a first one. Fernando, I know you've been here before you and John were even talking about some good salsa things. Um, great. So we've got a mix of people. And then how long have you been using Tableau? So if you've been only using it a few months, you could put it in months, but you could also put it in, in years if you've been using it much longer. So Fernando, two years, that's great. Seeing lots of answers from there. Nearly two years, a year and a half. You all aren't just new, new newbies, but you're newer to it. And there's definitely, as you learn Tableau, the more you'll get 105 in dog years, Chris is saying as well. So that, that says a lot. Um, but I always say in training, the best way to learn Tableau uh, is the best way to learn Tableau is to play with it. And the best way to play is with a friend. So we're your, BF, your TFFs, your Tableau friends forever, your best friends uh, here in the Tableau community. And we want to jump into helping answer some of those questions. So Fernando, I do know we had some submitted questions. Um, one was uh, around converting a minute value into hours and minutes. And another one was how to apply multiple date filters. Um, uh, I wasn't sure if you had, or anybody else on the call, if you all had a different question that you'd like us to jump into first, um, I'd be happy to do that as well. All right, let's start with this first question. And uh, I'm gonna hand it over to you, Chris and John. First question was, how do I convert a minute value into hours and minutes? 
Um, so Chris and John, I'm going to hand it to you guys uh, to take over from here. I'll just share my screen. I'll, I'll run you through that really quick. It doesn't um, have to be quick. Take your time actually with it. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've done this, done, done this a bunch of different ways over the years, and and there's a lot of things that you have to do to to convert dates uh, or convert like a time time period. Um, Tableau doesn't make it super easy, but a lot of times uh, you might get get a date formatted that's not how you want it, and you want to be able to break it out into pieces. So just doing the math, just knowing that how many hours are in a day or whatever else it is. So for this one, all I did, I just I just made a um, maybe kind of a parameter, just so we can see. So I've just chose 638, 38 minutes, right? So let's just say that was our that was our um, our uh, parameter. We can change that, and then if I want to write write, write write a calculation, I've already written the next year already. I did it earlier today. Is um, jump to a different screen. Is all I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, make time function. So we have the number of minutes but we need it to break out into hours. So we divide the minute by 60. And then this minute percent 60 tells us it's gonna be on the other side of, um, of, of, of the colon. Um, so this is a formula that Tableau gives you. I can show it. So make, make time, uh, you know, you can put in the different pieces that you want. So this, this would be if it was actually seconds. So the zero is the seconds on the end if I wanted those. So let's maybe even just put in put in like 15 here just for a goof. So if I pull this into my field, I've already made it, right? I pull this into here. Um, it's going to give me something that doesn't doesn't really look like what I what I uh, want. Well, the reason why is because <clears throat> Tableau, you know, the, how this field is already formatted is like a date time because it knows knows kind of what we're we're uh, using. So let's make this bigger so we can, everybody can see it. All right, so there's our there's our field. So all we have to do is just change this to um, to, to to exact date, and um, now it turns into ten minutes and thirty eight seconds. The reason why is because I I did a format of it. Oh, it should be where's my format? There it is. So when I did format, I chose custom, and I chose well, I actually did it as um, you know uh, hour hour colon min min right. So that's going to give me that. And then if I have one more colon and I want to put that put that other thing on the end, second, second, that's going to give me that 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 whole whole 15 that I, that I chose. Right. So that's all it is, is just using that make date formula. And then no matter what I type in, 1,236, that's going to that's going to figure out the number of hours, minutes. And then the seconds is actually defaulted because I put that in the formula. But that's pr pretty much it on how you would do that. Um, Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. I've got a question about, so because you put that percent and then the 15, it's always going to default to 15 seconds after the minute. Yeah. So if that I did this, is, yeah, if I did this as zero here, that would go to zero after. So this is just the seconds. So th this, this formula, the make time breaks it out into Hours, minutes, and seconds. So hours, minutes, seconds. I'm not even, I don't even need this percentage actually. Um, oh, oh no, 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 no I, I do because it's actually um, that's that's going to um, minutes to. It could even be just this actually. I don't know why it's percentage. I think it's because I'm looking at just the number, so it's going to take the first one out. <clears throat> it's just going to give me the ones that are left over that are not um, that are not whole, right? So this is going to give okay. me a whole number of 60 divided by 1,236, this is gonna give me the, the, the divided by of what's not a whole number. Gotcha. Here, let's make, okay. it, make it more simple. So if I go back to, to like 63 um, minutes, the first one is gonna give me, okay, well, this one divided by 60 gives me the hour. If I did this one by divided 60, it's gonna give me 101. Like it's not even going to work. It doesn't even do that because it can't go into that piece because minutes can't get there. So this one just gets that, that, that whole, whole, whole percent 60. And then probably if I wanted to do, if I had seconds in here, I could probably change this to seconds and then make the same thing out of seconds as well. You know, but I'd have to kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of play, 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 play with that a bit. But um, yeah. 
persona variation of that, what if, um, because the question stated specifically one value that was uh, showing an integer of minutes, um, but if they got, a, let's say a time index with a certain number of hours, a certain number of minutes, a certain number of seconds, would we have to do each time unit yeah. separately? So, yeah, let's say, let's say we had, 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 let's say we had that. So I think the best way to get into it, if you did, you know, so if we had, um, I should just not do this, let's do a parameter, create parameter. And let's say what comes in is um, uh, date or time uh, value. And let's just say it comes in as a string and the value is, you know, four hours. Um, and it doesn't have, maybe it doesn't have, it has period or something. It's how it doesn't understand what to do with it. So four hours, 23 minutes and, and, and like 15, 15 seconds, right? So that would be relatively easy. So if that was my, that was my value, I could always take that and then I could, um, I could create a, create a calculated field from it and then do like a split on that, right? Just find my, um, I could do like mid of the string. Uh, actually not mid, I probably do um, find uh, the string, substring I'm looking for is that period. Um, it'd be easier if I could do the alpha, I should be able to do it that way. Let me, let me try something else first before I do that. Like normally you can do like, Let's do order priority. Let's do this one. Create transform custom split. And I'll just say a period. And so I just want to get the formula for it. Then we change it out for the. So I should be able to do um, time value. And that should give me the um, um, hours. So let's call this time hours. Let's see what that gives us. That gives us the string of four, right? And so now I now that I have that, I could then duplicate, edit, and then this just comes into a two. So I'm looking at the second um, second period that I come to to give me that next value. I should have renamed it. Um, time minutes and duplicate um, time rename. Oops, I'll edit. Edit time seconds. And this is my third one. All right. So now those those three should give me all the pieces that I need. There's my hours, minutes, and my seconds. So then if I wanted to create, let's duplicate this guy and edit, we'll just call this 11 uh, time value. I could now say, Instead of all this, I could just pull in these fields. This goes in my hours. This goes in my minutes, right? And then this goes in my seconds. Let me get rid of that. So we've basically used that string to, well, I got to put all these as a uh, um, an int, probably. Yeah. Int. And int. Because when you do it the way I did it, it turns it into strings. So that should make it right. So now I have a time value. We'll put that on a new sheet. And same thing, it'll come in weird. We just make it exact date and four hours and 23 minutes. And then if we format it like custom, it's going to figure out what we're talking about. So oh, cool. So, um... Questions from anybody about the converting a minute value into hours and minutes. And John, I don't know um, even if we have that pulled up. Uh, with who who submitted that question? We could give them a shout out um, if you have that in your uh, report. Uh, yeah, um, actually, that was I had just closed it. <laughs> um, <laughs> here we go. Um, It was Richard Ronson, I believe. Excellent. Well, Richard, yeah. thanks for your question. This was a great one. And uh, I'm sure you're not the only one out there uh, trying to figure out uh, times and dates and Tableau are tricky, tricky. Um, so uh, the nice 
So the next question, uh, Chris, that was uh, that was submitted um, was how to apply multiple date filters for year and quarter. So I need multiple date filters uh, for year and quarter. Um, and John, while Chris is wrapping this up, uh, we could give a shout out to the person that submitted that question too. Yes. Is that she didn't have my stuff stolen here. There we go. Um, still mess into a dashboard just for fun. Um, yeah. So on how to do um, um, how to do those values. I'll end up making this be much much smaller. Let me do this in eleven. Anyway, I'll deal with this in a second. Um, there we go. So anyway, um, how I would. Um, do that. So there's a couple of different ways. Let's just make a couple of different graphs here. I'll come back. Want to that. finish the? Do you want to finish the dashboard first? We don't have to jump into that if you want to talk about what you're yeah, doing sure. right now. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just lay it out in, into a kind of a dashboard that we can just see the values. Um, so 63 would be what you passed in in this situation. So if you've made this, you know, 639, that's going to automatically fix it. So. 600 minutes is 10 or 600 seconds 600 minutes is 10 hours 39 minutes is what's left right so that's that's uh, that one um and then i was just going to do uh the other one this was that's from a value this is from a string so we got light mode and same thing here Boom. Leavened, light, and format. So I should have formatted these better earlier. And turn to view. And we'll make it right. There we go. So something like that. And then I'll pull up this one as well. We'll have the parameter. So we can have the uh, time value. So that's the one. Oh. Chris, maybe when you're done here too, you could kind of show what, what you're building this on. Um, one of the questions that um, I we thought about asking today is who's team tile and who's team float? Um, I think we know for sure you're team float um, for sure. Uh, and when we talk about tiled and floating, um, if you can close the um, format shading, Chris, and kind of show when you're in a dashboard, um, you've got options to either be tiled or floating um, on the bottom of, of the screen. Let me uh, highlight that. So here it's tiled, here's floating. Um, and you'll notice that Chris is building this out and putting these into what, what typically would be where we would put KPIs, key performance indicators, um, something we really wanna draw people's attention to from a high level standpoint. Um, and so Chris has already, um, uh, because we have this amazing uh, team um, that creates these uh, human-centered design principles based on those human-centered design principles, we create these Tableau templates. Um, and so, um, uh, our team created this uh, UI UX design background. It's an image um, that's created that has containers for us. And so, um, Chris, could you show how you even got that image in here to start with? That might be interesting to some people. If you do tiled, you may be dragging and dropping and allowing Tableau to kind of pick and choose where things go for you, where floating gets you a little bit more control. So, um, so it definitely right gets now, you more control and it's also faster. Um, yeah. So, for some reason, Tableau, um, like if I was to build a new dashboard and I start dragging these things in, it's just going to pick some spots for me, you know, and now I've got to do a lot of things to make it be what I want. But, but also too, with, with, with tiled, if I was to bring in an, an image, say, bring in a background, well, you can't layer on tiled. So tiled or uh, you can't layer on, on tiled. You can only layer, layer on floating. So if I want something to live on top of a background, I, I, I really can't, I really can't, uh, can't do that with, 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 with the whole floating one. Like, um, here, I'll just pull in one for actually for, we got, we got for, 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 for a Clemson. So like, well, it's not even Clemson, that's a different school, I'll pull in a different one. Uh, image. So if I pull in this guy, if I leave it on tiled, uh, this is going to hear. So J, um, uh, James, what was that? Jackson, Jackson State. Yeah, Jackson, Jackson State. So Stuart, you'd like to know, we've already got this done. So we've got a Jackson State version here, right? So oh, that's I, great. So if I make this floating, 
that's great, but I but I can't put I could put this on top of that, but I can't put these on top of this. So the thought is to make everything floating, right? So let me pull in a light one because I want to redo my. I want to change it instead of the the dark version or the dark mode. I'll do the light mode for the JMU. So let's just throw in the 008. There we go. So same thing. So if I make this and I say I want it to be in zero zero, and then we always start with like this, like the whole whole, whole sixteen by nine format. Which is the Which size is, of a PowerPoint slide yeah. for those of you who are yeah. wondering when we start with yeah. that. Go if you go down to your thing. I may have I should have selected this first actually because that'll change this, but I don't have to fix that. So sixteen by nine. Oops, there we go. So that should be the correct size. So I always set my dashboard size first, and then I drag that in. I send that to the back. Now everything else I add goes on goes on the uh, top of the top of this, right? So there, now I can layer in these different pieces to make it look good. And that's just kind of the key to making things look kind of snazzy. But snazzy, it's a good word. Yeah, yeah, it's snazzy. So we'll be sure to show you at the end of the call, I'll pull up, um, you know, we have a Tableau template site that you could download some of these. We're also happy to build them custom for you all, for your company. Um, lots of great fun things are going to be coming down the path as we evolve uh, our, our Tableau templates as well. So you're going to see some, some exciting stuff uh, over the next few months as we uh, continue this. But just thought some of you might not know, like, how do your dashboards look so nice when when mine are all white in the background and what's going on there. So uh, thought that might be helpful to walk through. All right, Chris, I think I will jump into our second question then about using multiple date filters. Um, and I know we were just on a client call prior to this, and I think um, that may have come uh, when it may have been one of their questions uh, that they submitted but weren't able to come today um, regarding uh, regarding using multiple date filters. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into that question when you're done here. Yeah, no problem. So um, yeah, so for, for 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 multiple date filters, let's just, um, let's make a quick graph here. Let's just do, um, we'll do uh, sum of sales and we'll do product subcategory, color by profit, whatever, okay, uh, format. And I'll get rid of the background. Like th these are things I would typically do starting out. I would go ahead and take off all the lines. Tableau by default adds a bunch of things that just make your eye go crazy. So especially if you're using backgrounds, you don't need 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 really any of this stuff. So I try to like the first thing I do when I come into a new dashboard, or uh, yeah, I, I like build one view and I take all the things off, and then I use that as my my, my kind of a default. So that's my that's that's that's, that's my like a default view that I would use. Okay, so let's say we have this um, subcategory. Okay, so that's our that's our field, and we're wanting to filter on uh, order date. Well, well, the easiest is you know if I say if I want to filter on uh, you know like re re relative dates, I can do that. Here it gives us month and year, but I think you wanted year and quarter. Those are the combinations. So, Correct. yeah, is that right? Yep, got yeah. it, sir. So you should be always be able to. You could probably even make any of these that you wanted to, but let's just do let's do range of range of dates. Or actually, let's do let's just do regular date. Let's just do a year. We'll do a year to start with. So uh, I should have that one. Let's do um, let's do order date. I'll just drag it on here for now. That's going to come in as my as my as my 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 year. Let's do this one. Let's see if I can change it. So this is going to give us so not the quarters. Okay, maybe I maybe I should do a little work on this one. So typically I would use I, I would use the um, the the kind of kind of relative date because then you can always look back a quarter or whatever. But I think in your situation you just want to have both. You probably want to have one for for years. And then just put use all, and then you'd also have another one for 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 a quarters. Um, oops, quarter date again. So you could always do 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 this. This is probably the most easy way to do it. Um, use all, and then you could 
you know, um, make sure this is, uh, let's just show these filters. So show filter and show filter. So this would let you, you know, dive down into these things. So if I only wanted to show, you know, Q, Q4 across all, all years, that would do it. But typically when people are wanting to do this, it's not for a graph like this. It's really more for like, I mean, you may want the exact numbers for a quarter and a year. And you could obviously do that. You could obviously say, okay, give me 2011 Q, Q2. And that would give you exactly what you, what you asked for. But now if you want to compare Q2 to Q1, it's, that's really hard to, 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 to uh, do in this, this, uh, this uh, graph. So typically what I would tell people is what they're really wanting to know is they're wanting to know a, a kind of kind of a trend over time. And then and then and, and then and then let, let me actually compare multiple multiple things. So how 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 I would do that, and I'm gonna throw this on this dashboard, this view for a second. So we'll throw that over here. Okay, throw that up here, a little subcategory. Uh, and I, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to take these out because we're going to do it do, 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 do a different way. So instead of doing this by those products, you might want to know the products, but you're probably most likely going to want to know the um, um, you're going to want to know the actual timeline that things are happening. So if I give you a trend, and I can do it by you know by year and quarter. So now I've got year year and quarter that shows shows what's happening, okay? So I'm just gonna call this one my trend. Um, and we'll do, we're gonna split out um, sales and profit on two different lines. Maybe we'll dual access it or something. And we won't even make these, uh, we'll do sales as blue and profit as orange for now. So <clears throat> that way you can see both of them. If I wanted to synchronize the axis, I could. Or even I could say, hey, you know, profit's going to get um, going to get a bar versus a, versus like a line, just so you can see those. And I probably put the sales on top, so it goes and goes in front of it. So something like that. And maybe we don't show the the, or maybe we just show the sales numbers, or not not the uh, profit profit numbers. Just Definitely out. synchronized because it would be weird for you to. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, good idea. So that's your yeah. Th those are all your all your numbers. So here's your profit. You're negative on these years, positive on all these, but you see that, you know, here, you know, sales went down and also so, so did actually profit. One thing is confusing about this is that because of um, how it works is the, the line chart ends kind of like in actually between the two. Some people get confused that, okay, well, why does it line up in the middle of the bar? It doesn't, lines are lining up on the, on, on the kind of the changeover from one to another versus a bar will span the entire group, you know? So anyway, yeah. so that's- you know how I fix that, Chris, about how I've done it? I don't know uh, if you've done this before, but you can change your uh, your sales to actually be discrete. So this is not changing it. It's still a date part um, or a date value. You know, you're not changing that. Ugh, that's not going to work in that case. Yeah, with the double dual axis. Never mind. I don't think that's going to work for you. Um, yeah, the not over, not over, yeah, not, not, over, not over time, it's not going to work. Yeah. All right, so that would kind of give you what you're going to want to know. And I'm going to put this over here just because I probably should have a bigger bigger graph. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to make this span the bottom and we'll just deal with it for now. Um, all right, so, and actually in this case, I am going to, um, I'm going to color my uh, background just so it doesn't have that gap in there. Normally, I would get a different template that would make that work perfectly, but we're kind of pressed for time, so don't worry about that right now. But anyway, so here's my overall trend. Now, here's the here's the key of what you're what you're not going to want. You're going to want some way to to drill down to these different things. So what I often use is I use um, kind of this like heat 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 uh, map. Okay. So what I would do here is I'd say I could do it by sales or by profit or by you know whatever. So let's just drag that into text for now. And I want to change this one to quarters and this one to years, okay? And then I may just do, uh, I'll do this first, I'll drag it up on me. And then I don't like that being on size, I'd rather that be on color. And let's maybe um, put a white in the background just for now. Okay, 
So I will rid my hide labels. I'll rotate this one. Okay, so now we have something decent here because this is going to be um, rename sales and we'll duplicate this one and I'll rename it again sales um, heat map and rename of profit heat map. Okay. So, so now with this one, profit, I'll take that. Profit goes on my size and we're gonna color this one differently. We'll color this one just in oranges. So we'll do um, orange gold. There we go. And this one's already kind of blues already, that's fine. Okay, so there's our, those are different pieces. So now we go back to our dashboard, which we're going to here it is. So I'll take my sales heat map over here, maybe. And we'll do our view, but we'll make it much smaller. And we'll do the same thing for my profit. Now I've got two things that do basically the same thing. I might want to see them, see them separately. Okay, so now if I want to look at, um, look at like a quarter over quarter, like or I, I actually quarters by by year, this is what I want to know. I want to know how Q two compares year over year, right? So this, these are giving the exact same numbers as that's at the bottom, 35, 62, 41, all exactly the same thing. And then this is gonna be a summation of all those quarters by, by these products. If I wanna know one product, let's say I wanna know Q2 year over year by tables, I can now give you that. So now I, can, I combine all the Q2s by just tables. Or if I want to say, hey, don't do Q2, give me tables for just one year, right? There's my one year based on all of my quarters, right? So this is how I would actually combine them is through, through the use of actions and these like heat maps because, you know, people will ask you for kind of a date slider or something like that, but you can't get down to the comparison because you end up having to drag it to different pieces. To, to to really kind of kind of uh, get there. Heather, do you think that answers the question that was given? Actually, Absolutely. thank you, Chris. Yeah, for I was going to say that's sorry. Fernando's question. So, oh, was it okay? Good. Yeah. Does that answer? Does that does that, does that can help you at all? It does. I'm I'm struggling because I'm trying to calculate uh, the count distinct of like a customer ID, and whenever I do that, it only shows. That customer ID for like whatever. Oh. I guess I don't know how how Tableau calculates that, but it I, will, I you, you know you. if I want to, see, yeah, okay, I want to so see it by here. by quarter. Got it, got it. Okay, so what you want to know is this: you want to know if I have a distinct now number of number of customers, right? So that's all, 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 all so, so that's my total number of customers. But you want yep. to know by order date. You want to know how many bought by year and quarter. Right. So uh, let's do it as a bar. Okay. So now there's there's that. So that that tells you how many distinct customers bought every every quarter. Now the the next thing you're going to ask me is what? It was well, if, if they exist in all of our data. And we're removing the, the the unique values. Yep. What I want to see them like if they return each quarter, I want to see them counted yep. again. Correct. So you want to know of this 333, how many bought in the first quarter and how many are new or how many are returning. Right? Yes. Okay. So all you have to do for that, Tableau gives you a great thing. It's called a level level, level of detail calculation. You want to fix your calculation on the, uh, in this case, we're using the, um, the uh, customer name. You probably want to use, use the ID, but I use name just because I had it. 
And then I want to pull okay. in the minimum of their order date. So I want to tell you when they first bought, right? So that's going to give me the first time that they that they purchased. So now if I just drag that to color, that's going to tell you. So all of these, well, this is all, uh, I got to do it as, um, hang on, I got to change this to quarter month. There we go. So that that would give you the exacts. So 350, 362 bought in year one, quarter one. 41 of the 362 bought in quarter two, and you had 292 new ones. So this bottom graph is all of the, all of the news, and then anything else has has actually bought like a previous quarter. Does that make sense? Thank you. That's what I yes, that's what I needed. That LOD. I wasn't sure how to calculate that. Yeah, that's 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 really a good one. And actually, Tableau even has that's that's one that's out there in their standard thing. If you go to uh, Tableau level of detail, there will be um, top fifteen. Top 10. Uh, yeah, right there, Chris, right below. There it is. This one, yeah. yeah. This is this is a great. Uh, they do a great job on this one. So the one I just showed you. And typically it's not a um, I think it's this one. This is one I just gave me. part. So yeah, yeah, cohort analysis it is, Chris, yeah. for sure. This is, this is the one you want. And it gives you a step by step. It tells you exactly what to do. This is exactly what I just wrote. Fixed on I still had a customer name, but fixed on customer, customer ID and the minimum of your order date. That's that's like basically it. You know, and then it just tells you what to what to what to do with it. This is exactly the chart that I wrote. Yeah. If the only difference is there's is a date part instead of a date value, I think is the only difference I'm seeing, Chris, but absolutely getting the right answers. Yep. Yep. You got it. So thank yeah, you. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of st stick, stick, stick this in the uh, chat for you just so you have that handy. Uh, if I can get there, there we go. But yeah, that's, that's kind of exactly how you uh, do that. So, well, awesome. Eight, seven. And Chris, I did test it out over here. I'm not sure what didn't work um, with it, but I, I have been able to do a dual axis and get the bar chart, get the line in the midst of the bar. So I'll just kind of show that real fast um, as well. And then I know, John, we had some plans since we had so many date questions, just to give a little tutorial on the difference between date parts, date values and things too. So let me just share my screen real fast. Um, all I've done, let me uh, change this, um, and John's going to be getting into uh, some additional questions, but you'll notice this is where Chris was. I've got profit and sales that are here, um, and this is where you can see the line is just lining up with the bar chart on the edge. Um, all this does, if you have your, your date parts are at the top here, these are your date values in this center section. So here's date parts. These are your date values. These will hold the same. This is still a continuous date value. All I'm doing is changing whether or not this is an axis or not um, when I do the discrete and continuous. So what I'm gonna do is take this from continuous. It's a green pill when it's continuous. I change it to discrete. And now we've got each of these single points that are showing up and you'll see that it's right in the, right lines up with the middle of the bar. So I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, why that didn't work in that first time I went through, but just wanted to point that out if that's ever bothering you. What that will then give you is every single bar will be labeled. So this is verse, a header is what this would be called versus if I go to continuous, this is an axis. So when I click on it, it's one axis that is continuous over time. If I make it discrete, it's a header for each and every bar. So just the only thing you have to be careful on this one, Heather, while yeah. you're there, click your... Um, Click the um, uh, click like this guy here. Click your sort. Yeah, yeah. So the, that's the only problem with that is now 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 your now your now now your dates are not in order. Yeah. So when you, when you change it from actually continuous to to discrete, it gives you the ability to 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 actually reorder those columns. So now you see there's, no, there's no line anymore because yeah. there's actually dots don't don't actually connect. Yeah, and you'll see it's definitely totally out of order um, with that. Yeah, yeah. that's a really good pointer um, with it too. So we'll go back to where we started. Um, yeah, I guess we could lock down the sort option by you know not allowing that with a blank box or something, Chris, in it, but good point. 
Um, but yeah, if that definitely if is bothering you with it, that's one way I've solved that before. Good job. So John, I think I'm going to hand this over to you for some tips and tricks um, around dates and just understanding um, date parts, date values, and what that all means. If, if uh, you're, if you've got a little bit of time ready to do that. Um, sure. You walk through. Yeah. Let me share my screen. Um, this is something we get all the time, huh, John? It's just dates are confusing in Tableau. You have so many options. So Absolutely. Especially when you have a data set that might have multiple dates. You might have a ship date, an order date, um, a return date, um, all those different things. And then um, you might be using those dates in different manners. So because it's such a frequent question, this is actually a part of the um the coursework that we normally offer when we're training folks on uh, Tableau desktop, but um, understanding dates in Tableau. And we're really distinguishing between the discrete date part versus the continuous date value. And, and Heather started to um, highlight that in that last example that she showed. When we talk about discrete date parts, we're really talking about those individ individual units of time, right? So for example, if I were to, um, choose a date like say June 10th, uh, 1985, right? We've got the month piece, we've got the day piece, we've got the year piece. And that's what we're all we're talking about when we're talking about this date parts, um, the individual unit of time that may make up that particular set of dates. Typically this is gonna appear as a blue pill as we saw, and I'm gonna do an example here shortly. Um, but more specifically, because it's a blue pill, that's normally associated with discrete fields. And what discrete fields are specifically used for is creating headers like Heather had just pointed out. So we're actually looking for these types of things. So if I was looking for a trend, like in the example Chris had shown, if I was looking to see, you know, what is the sales activity or the profit um, uh, margin uh, over a specific trend of years, uh, I could see that within the data set. And again, I'll show this in an example in a second. Um, uh, but then these can also be reordered. So I could, for example, decide I want to see quarters um, uh, broken down uh, by years or vice versa. I could have years broken down by quarters. So by having these different discrete pieces, I can rearrange them as much as I want. Um, so let me give you an example real quick. Let me bring my workbook into view. And say I was looking at sales broken down by order date. Now, Tableau is going to follow the hierarchy uh, that the date fields use, which is typically years are broken down by quarters, are broken down by months, uh, weeks, days, and so on, right? If we went down to the time unit, you'd have hours, minutes, seconds. So Tableau always defaults to the highest level of the hierarchy. So you'll see that what it's looking at is the year field. And if I just create a quick filter here, you can see that we've got four years worth of data in our data set. And so what it's doing is showing me the trend of the uh, annual sales for each of those particular years. And if I decided I wanted to break this down, again, I'm looking at labels for each year. I could modify this to show me, and just like Heather had pointed out, um, this upper section is for discrete parts, and this lower section is for continuous parts. So uh, my next example will be about the continuous parts down here. But if I modified this instead of years, I decided I wanted to see the months. Well, now what I'm looking at is the monthly sales activity over this period of time. You'll also notice that Tableau automatically defaults you can see that the mark type it's automatically chosen is a line chart. And it's done that because we tend to think of time as linear and it, Tableau knows that. And so it defaults to that. But in actuality, if I was looking at this trend, I might be interested, a line would work, but if I was looking at uh, these bars, this would show me the sum of all of the sales for that particular month over time. Now, by the way, remember we had four years worth of data in here. So this one bar, which represents January, is all four Januaries in our data set summed together. 
So what we're actually looking at is the trend of sales over that four year period. I can see what the, the uh, monthly trend is um, annually, right? A little bit different than what I might be interested in. Um, also, another thing to point out is you'll notice that there's a separation between the bars. Um, and that is because when I had this as a line chart, and this has to do with the analytics, the, the visual piece, we tend to think of these as line charts as I needed to go through this value to get to this value to get to this value, which means there's a relationship between these different data points, right? If I instead present this as bar charts, you notice that separation here. So what this is really saying is, is that this value is actually independent from this value. It had nothing to do with, I didn't need to go through this value down here to get to this. These are all discrete or independent values over time. Right, so that's one piece for the for the date parts, and then the other piece. If I were to take the same sales data, and again present it broken down by order date, I have the option of again using the menu to describe it as date parts versus uh, I'm sorry, uh, discrete date parts versus continuous date values. Now let me just talk about the phrasing there for just a second. When we say continuous uh, date values. The reason we refer to that, think of think of time as a line, right? So let's say that this was, um, this represented, say, January of 2000, all the way to, say, December of 2023, right? If I had a value that appeared on this line, maybe that particular date represents I don't know, uh, June of uh, say 2002, right? This individual position on this timeline represents a specific value because we're treating this just like any other axis, right? So if I had an axis that represented say zero to a million, right? Um, an individual value on there would just be somewhere on that line. And that's why we refer to it as a date value. Right, so that's what these are actually, um, when I convert this into a, an axis, that's what happens. So I'm gonna take this discrete date part, which is currently set to the year level of the hierarchy. I'm gonna set it to a continuous year. And when I do that, you're gonna notice the chart is actually the same. All it's done is it's stretched out this axis because this is actually an individual axis. But if I modify the scale of the axis, let's say I go down to quarters, and this is what Chris was showing us earlier, right? These four values represent the first four quarters of 2012, followed by the second four quarters, which are 2013, the, la the third three quarters, and then the last three quarters here, right? Um, that are included. So it's just showing us on a continuous timeline what those values are. And that's why this chart would better be represented as a line chart. So when I, let me jump back to my PowerPoint for a second. Um, when we talk about continuous date values, we're looking at a chronological representation of time, right? Um, along this timeline, which is just the axis that we're using to present the data. Typically, the pills are going to appear as green. Why? Because green pills generate axes, which is what we need in order for there to be a timeline. So we talk about this in greater detail. We do a number of different exercises when we go through training. But um, when you can understand and comprehend the difference between the date part versus the date value, it really empowers you to be able to decide how you want to present that data to your audience. And that's really what we're trying to leverage with Tableau. That's so hopefully awesome. that made sense. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. One of our, our uh, former trainers here, he would teach people that um, when you see a green, the green pill uh, by default, when that just comes up automatically, when you see a green light, you continue through it and you see a green pill, it's continuous. So that was a little, little, uh, uh, 
way to remember things that I thought was great. Um, Chris, I'm going to toss this back over to you now. Um, we've got a great question um, from Amber um, on the call right now. Um, so if we look in the chat, here is the question she has for you. Um, really relevant. We, we just had something similar come up in another call today as well. Um, if I wanted to see uh, data defaulted to today, but also be able to use input fields for date start and date end for the same view. Is that possible? And if so, do I need to do things in a certain order for both of those to work? Um, yes, it's always possible. So, <laughs> so if you wanted, well, I don't have, I don't, I don't have like today in this actually like the data set, but let's say that I did then obviously you could do, um, let's just do sales over time. So I think the last order date I have is, let's make it exact, I'll tell you exactly what I have. So I've got um, 1231 probably, yeah, 1231, 2013. So obviously if you wanted it to actually fault to, to, to the current day, the easiest way is just to drag your order date to, to your relative date, and that's going to always be, and that's going to by default anchor to, to uh, today, right? So if I wanted the last three months, it's not going to show anything because my date is wherever it is, but that's 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 actually what you would do typically if you wanted to do that. Um, if you wanted it to be, to, to, to default to a different date, if it was always the same date, I could say I want to anchor it to, you know, 1231. 12, yeah, yeah, that's 20, uh, 20, 20, 13. So I can do the last three months based on that date, right? So I could do last four months. So that, but you can't change that on the fly. That would be how your dashboard had to be built. Probably doesn't make sense to do that. Um, I don't think there's a way to change change that anchor date. Um, I don't think you can put in a put in a formula there or anything. Yeah, so, not without a creator yeah. license, Chris. I'm just doing it manually that I know of. Um, John, yeah. I don't know if you know so otherwise. So the other, the other option to, to do is this. It's a little bit more um, kind of detailed, but you could say, we could always say, um, uh, create calculated field. Actually, let's do this first. Let's create, um, let's create, create, create a parameter and we'll call this anchor date, A-N-C-H-O-R date. And we'll make it a date and we'll do it as, you know, 12, 10, 20, or uh, yeah, 2013. Oh, that's way in the future. Okay. So, so that's our current value. We can do a range, all whatever. So that's going to be my anchor date. Then I could say, okay, create calculated field. Uh, actually, let's do one more thing. Yeah, I, I can make it more complicated, but let's just do this. Let's just say um, uh, show hide um, by parameter, okay? So I would say if um, order date is um, uh, greater than or equal to, um, just do uh, date add, and I would say, my date part is going to be day for this one. I'll say, I and mean, this is where we can get complicated. Um, my interval is going to be so. If I say like, I want to go back back one one uh, one a year, so back 365 days of my um, of of my anchor date. A N C H. Why can't I do that? Why can't that pull that in? There it is. I think I didn't spell it right. Um, okay. So basically what this is going to do is this is going to give me a, what's wrong with that? Oh, I didn't say what to do. Um, then uh, show uh, else um, hide. Okay. And so this is basically going to say, okay, well, if I'm anchoring at a certain date, I'm going to go back one extra year and show and hide it. So if I drag that into my filters, I can only show the show and that's going to limit me from the should have been further back than that. Okay. Oh, because it's yeah, it'll show any this this one I did it where I, I said it's 360 days back from the anchor. So this is gonna only gonna be back to that 1210. Right. So if I change my anchor date edit, probably have to get a little bit more more kind of complicated here. 
but basically I could change this to be anything I wanted. So if I said, okay, if I wanted to go 1, 1, 20, 13, then that's going to, it's still going to show anything past that date, right? So this will be one year past, one year back from anchor date and show anything forward. Um, that may not be exactly what you asked. I may have done it backwards, but um, does that make sense? Amber, does that answer your question? I think so. I think I need to watch the recording again to understand fully. <laughs> I could I could do other things. Like we could take this this date here and say, okay, well, let's do something different. Is so right now I think I have it to set to say, okay, if your date, if your order date is greater than or equal to that. So so it's your anchor date minus 365. So I could say, um, I could change this to be. Let's do another parameter, create parameter and um, uh, days back from anchor, right? So we make this a integer and let's just call it, you know, 30 days, okay? So now I change this formula to say, okay, um, we'll do negative one times, uh, days back from anchor. So now I have two different formulas to show. So now I say, okay, my, my, my anchor date is 1231. I want to go back for 45 days from that. And I want to show 45 days and forward. Mm. Now that that's pretty slick too. That I like. Well, the good news is, is we've recorded this. We'll also be um, able to share the workbook um, as well. Um, and so let me go ahead and share my screen, Chris, and I'll kind of do a quick wrap up here um, with where we are with things. Let me get my screen shared. So just keep in mind, this is something that we, we're going to be doing every uh, second Wednesday of the month. Um, but in between that time, if you have a question, you can simply go to uh, the boulderinsight.com forward slash questions and, um, and put in your question in advance of uh, the Tableau Live session, and we'll be sure to answer it in our next session. Um, and you also, I know we mentioned a few other things today too. I want to make sure to show you how you can get a hold of us for help and uh, one of the things to keep in mind, if you do submit a question, um, that'll get you eligible for a free 30-minute uh, coaching session with Chris. And I do want to show you our website. If you do need a coaching session um, that's a longer session and things and you don't win the session that's there, you can always click on this button at the bottom of the screen to schedule time um, with Chris. You'll get a, a uh, can do a quick project consultation or um, some paid consultations and get you much further um, very quickly than uh, spinning your own wheels on your end. We never want you to be suffering uh, alone. Know that we are here with you all. And I also mentioned our Tableau templates earlier. So I just just want to show you if you click on the top of our screen on Tableau templates that will take you to our templates and stay tuned there's going to be some additional really cool updates on ways that we're doing uh, our Tableau templates so keep an eye on that as well so this is our questions form just a few questions for you that you can answer and then give us your question so uh, uh, that we can answer your question in the next Tableau live so I just can't thank you all enough for joining us um, we look forward to uh, seeing you at next month's session which is going to be August 9th at 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Mountain, 12 p.m. Uh, Pacific. And I, I left out our, our central time folks. So uh, they're in there too <laughs> at noon. Um, and then just remember, submit those questions early via the BIG question form or share your questions when you register. You now have that opportunity to do it right at registration. So thanks so, so much, everybody. I hope um, your answers uh, to your questions were answered today. And please, please come back to us anytime. Uh, we'd love to see you next month or any month after that coming on. Take care. Happy, happy Wednesday.